Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to find the base pointer of any pointer chain. We're also going to talk about why the pointer finder tool isn't much that help when we're dealing with pointer chains, especially in cases like PS2 games. This trick works on any system. Alright, without any further ado, let's get started. Now, before we start, make sure you've seen my previous video. Click the link in the top right corner. It gives you the basics like where static memory usually lives in RAM for your game. That's important because it helps you know where to look for those base pointers. In this example, I'm trying to find the base pointer of this address. I've got three dynamic addresses, one for each save state. This tells me that I'm definitely dealing with a pointer chain. Let me show you why the pointer finder doesn't really help here. So I'll open it up, load the first save state and paste the dynamic address into slot 1. And I'll do the same for the others. I'll hit find and nothing. Alright, so how do we fix that? I'm gonna use the debugger instead. I'll add the address, set a breakpoint and uncheck read so it breaks right when the address is being interacted with in-game. And boom, it breaks. But let's see what it shows. Looks like we've got the T2 register with an offset of 0x10. I'll try searching for that value in the register and... And... Yeah, nothing. We're gonna start by tracing from the dynamic address itself. So, I'll load a save state and pick one of the dynamic addresses. I'm gonna search nearby memory right around the dynamic address starting from here and downwards, until I find something interesting in the results. Here's the trick. Valid pointer values usually end in zero. That's because the last four bits are zero. Also, when you're looking at big ending values in 8-bit view, that zero is where the value starts. It's a handy indicator. Let me show you what I mean exactly. This is an array list where most of the pointers end in zero. That's how you know there are likely valid pointers. So I'll go back to the memory around my dynamic address and start searching upward or downward since the memory is it's downward and it makes sense like that. Still nothing. Move up a bit. And there it is. I'll add that address to the achievement editor. Set its flag to add address and then add a condition below it with an offset of zero. Now if I right click that condition, it'll take me to the address I just searched for. And look, it's the same value as our target dynamic address that we've just searched for, obviously. If you look closely to the value of this pointer, it is the same as the address it leads me to when I hit right click on the offset of zero. Okay, next we need to calculate the offset to reach our dynamic address. We start from the value that our pointer is pointing to at offset 0x0, zero zero, which is this one. And then we're gonna count 1, 2, rows down, and that equals 20. Then move one column to the right, that's 4 bytes, so now it's 24. If you wanted to go, say, the, co the C column, you would just look at the label and make it 0x2c. Easy. It's just the rows count vertically and the columns are horizontal. So basically, we've got 0x01b21390 plus the offset of 0x24 equals 0x01b213b4, which is exactly our dynamic address. That's our first level pointer, or layer, but it's still in dynamic memory. If I change save states, this pointer simply breaks. Okay, let's confirm that this offset that we've came up with works across different save states. I'll grab a different dynamic address from another save state and do the same thing. We should still get an offset of 24. To double check, I can use a calculator. Subtract 24 from the dynamic address. Yeah, 
And yeah, we'll get the same address as before. Or we can do it the same way as earlier. Descend by two rows down. Search the value and... There it is, again. Same pointer. And same structure. If we compare the structure... It is exactly the same. Set the offset to 24 and we're good. Now I'll switch back to the first save state and repeat the same steps. Scroll down, nothing. We keep going. Boom. Got it. If your offset is way far, this process can be a bit tedious. A trick I use instead of copy pasting every raw manually, just change the raw digit in the address field and keep descending. Just make sure you're using the proper hex values when descending. Eventually, you'll find the base pointer for your variable. I'll add that, flag it, and set the condition offset to 0x0. Now, we want to find the correct offset to reach the variable from here. So we count down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 rows down. Then we move 4 bytes to the right. That sums it up with 0x84, that's the total offset. So now we've got the correct base pointer and the offset that always points to our dynamic address. Let's test that with our third save state. And as you can see, it points correctly. The base pointer stays stable, and only the value changes. If we compare all three safe states, the structure matches. That confirms this pointer chain is legit for making a chivo. Here's a tip I want you to understand. If your pointer is really far, you can scan for possible base pointers by using range filtering. To do this, pause the emulator, select the address, copy and paste it in the search box field. Then set the filter type to less than and hit filter. Change the last two or three digits of the address to something smaller, better be not too far. Then switch the filter type to greater than and hit filter once more. This will give you a bunch of addresses that are possibly pointing to our target address. Just remember to skip anything whose last four bits are not zero. Alright guys, that's it for this one. Thanks a lot for watching. Cheers.